Hi, and welcome back to David Pattinson's Accused Friends. People have been asking me, what does Rishi mean when he uses the phrase funded by the government? And anyone who knows Rishi knows not only is he a crook, but is a barefaced liar. So when he uses the phrase funded by the government, he specifically means not funded by the government. He means funded by you, but the government will take the credit. And uh, there's three areas of risk and uh, danger whenever Rishi is anywhere near people's money. Uh, number one is tax, uh, to, to pay for all the outrageous spending that he does. Number two is that inflation, so the, the purchasing power of your pound declines. You can buy less and less with the pounds in your pocket because they're worth less because of the money printing and all the, the reckless borrowing. And the third thing is, is debt. Uh, it's what I call generational theft. It's money spent today, but the bill is put on young people and unborn people. And if I came, uh, if I went on a spending binge and I spent uh, 50,000 pounds worth of, uh, you know, credit card um, debt on goods and services, and then I lumbered you with the bill, you know, you'd say David Pattinson's a bad guy, David Pattinson's a fraudster, you'd probably call the police, uh, and I'd be charged with, with fraud. But yet, if Rishi spends 50000 on a credit card and gives it to your grandchild, who's maybe born or unborn, you know, he's heralded as some sort of great guy for the, the same crime. Surely, if, you know, I'm... Uh, spending money and passing the bill on to you, that's fraud, that's a criminal offence. But if Rish is doing it, surely that's equally criminal. So this guy's a totally bad guy. He needs to be arrested and put in prison. And uh, that would be a signal to the market that the economy can finally start to recover. With Rishi out there spending more and more money and he's done doing his mini budget yesterday, um, you know, the UK economy has no real hope of recovery because all this spending is crowding out investment. And it is also uh, all this threat of lockdown and more lockdown and second wave. You know, no one's going to be starting a business in this environment. And, um, you know, the, the cause of the problem is not the virus. It's the lockdown. It's a man-made crisis. It's a uh, conservative government. It's Rishi and Boris Johnson and Matt Hancock and all those crooks. Uh, have locked down the country, they've crashed the economy, and now they want to present themselves as the solution to the problem with your money, but yet they'll call it, you know, government-funded, government support, government gifts, government loans. It's all just a bunch of fraud. It's it's our money. The government doesn't have any money, um, not only because they've spent us into debt, but they don't actually produce any money. They just tax the people and, and spend much more so I want to take you through a few graphs that I've dug up to um, kind of give a bit of a sense of the state of our public finances, not only today, but also with a historical comparison. And, and this picture here looks at our, um, you know, our GDP, our growth every year. And, and what you can see, um, you know, is just the overall decline in growth over time. Gordon Brown, I remember when he was prime minister, he said he wanted to put an end to what he called Tory boom and bust. And uh, he certainly put an end to the booms. Uh, he didn't put an end to the busts. He just made them that much bigger. And um, as you can see there, uh, there's the 2008 financial crisis, which is the big V. And uh, the 2020 V is not here yet, but uh, you'd probably need another computer under your desk to, to get that V because it's going to be so deep. What you also notice from this graph is how our, our growth um, over the decades has um, you know, waned and it's because we're carrying more debt. Um, we're carrying more debt, which means there's less um, money in the economy to invest in growth and to invest in new jobs, to invest in new wealth. Uh, there's also more tax and regulation these days. And there's a bigger group of retirees uh, sucking money out of the economy to spend on you know, retirement and healthcare and that sort of stuff. And there is also a massive increase in welfare. So there's more and more people doing less and less work. And there's fewer and fewer people able to grow the economy. So if you look back to the 1960s, we've got, you know, 5% growth, 7% growth, no problem. Whereas you come to the last decade, you're looking at 2% growth, it's kind of a good year. 
And, uh, you know, obviously all the bailout money that was spent in 2008 to bail out the economy made the crash less, but made the recovery, um, you know, less as well. Um, so this uh, quote unquote recovery has been so anemic because we're not allowed to have real recessions anymore where we clear out the debt, we monetize the debt, we have created destruction and we have real growth uh, following it. We only now have um, stagnant growth and we have an economy with moral hazard because we have companies that know if they make bad financial decisions, they are going to be bailed out by people like Rishi. And uh, that's what makes him such a bad guy. So, um, you know, not, not a pretty picture, uh, that, that particular graph. If we look at this next one, which is the, the debt to GDP ratio, um, you know, when when you and I talk about reducing debt, we're talking about, you know, a £20,000 credit card bill and, and dropping that down to £5,000. That's, that's like a reduction in debt. When the government talk about reducing debt, they're not actually talking about reducing it. They're just talking about increasing it at a slightly lower rate than normal. So if they're adding uh, a 20,000 pound credit card bill every year, and the next year they add only a 19,000 pound credit card bill, they call that reducing debt. And um, so the debt as a percentage of income, you can see since World War II, it, it's dropped right down. And then, you know, obviously it's jumped up again after the, uh, the 2008 uh, financial crash. And, um, you know, the, the, the financial crash of 2020 has its origins in the crash of 2008 because we weren't allowed to crash properly. We just uh, transferred a bunch of debt from young people or from old people onto young people. We bailed out retirees, we bailed out big business. And, um, you know, we pushed young people into a life of less jobs, less growth, less income, more debt. And, um, you know, we bailed out retirees. And now, of course, we've got another economic crash as a result of that in 2020. And it's going to push our debt right up to um, kind of where it was after World War II. But this time it's without a war. So we're not even fighting a war yet. We're, uh, but we're in a, as vulnerable a position as we were had we just fought one. Thanks to, uh, well, thanks to reckless spending up to this point. But also thanks to the lockdown. I mean, we've gone into the lockdown in a position of financial weakness, not in a position of financial strength. And there was some, there was a journalist yesterday saying, you know, how is Rishi going to pay the cost of the two trillion debt we have? But that's the debt before the lockdown. He's added another two trillion to it. So it's going up to four trillion now. Um, anyway, next graph is a sort of a more of a close up of the previous one. You can see this area on the right. You got all this high debt, high spending, and it says conservative um, or slash coalition underneath. So I did a video about why the conservatives are not conservative, and people gave me some criticism for that. But if you look at this graph, I think it makes it pretty clear. If New Labour is more conservative financially than the conservatives of today, then I think that tells you everything you need to know. Uh, we've had some uh, real conservatism is on the far left in the 1980s, where we're reducing, um, you know, debt to GDP every year. Um, you know, we've had a, a jump in the early 90s with the recession there. And of course, the thing is with these recessions, people say, well, David, we've got to increase government spending. I mean, no, we don't. Why don't we just cut government spending as taxes decline? Why don't we cut all these government operations? Why don't we cut the foreign aid office? Why don't we cut the global warming crowd? Why don't we cut, cut all this uh, bureaucracy, the Department of Education that makes us more economically illiterate every year? Why don't we get rid of all these people? Get rid of all this, um, you know, the, the, uh, the justice system, the unequal justice crowd. That would allow all this debt to decline. But of course, the government just keeps spending more and more every year. And then the final graph I want to show you is total debt. So all this debt adds, um, accumulates on top of each other. Every year we add debt and that, you know, adds up to total debt. And you can see this column on the left hand side, which is total debt. And this stops at October 2019. But we're at about this 2000 billion is, is what I call two trillion. And uh, we're at two trillion going into the um, the lockdown and then coming out of the lockdown over the next few years, thanks to Rishi, we're going to be adding another two trillion. So we're going up to four trillion in total and probably even higher than that. I mean, as long as Rishi is in charge of public finances, 
they're going to be getting worse and worse and worse. And you can ask the question, what would Rishi have to do to be doing a bad job? I mean, how high has our debt got to get before we say this guy's not doing a good job? I mean, has it got to get to 6 trillion, to 8 trillion, to 20 trillion, to 50 trillion, to 100 trillion? How reckless has that guy got to be with our money before it's like, no, Rishi, this is like, this is too much now. I'd have said that would have happened months ago. The guy's a total disgrace. The guy knows nothing about increasing our wealth, preserving our wealth, protecting our wealth. He wants to blow our, um, our wealth to smithereens and then he wants to dump the bill on young people. What are young people going to say about this? Why don't we start asking them? Why don't we start getting five-year-olds on Sky News and saying, what do you think about the fact that Rish has given you a bill of 50,000 or 100,000 that you need to pay off over the rest of your life? We never talk about this stuff, yet the generational theft is out of control. And um, I think someone needs to sort of say something about it. So, um, Funded by the government means not funded by the government. And uh, you also see with, with Rishi and Boris Johnson, they're talking about all this stuff about, you know, companies need to hold off layoffs until the good times come back. And, you know, companies that don't lay off staff are going to get, but you know, more bailout money and all this sort of stuff. What if companies need to get rid of staff in order to survive? What if companies need to uh, get rid of staff in order to reduce their, their debt to make themselves more productive? I mean, if think about the airlines. If you're a uh, an airline, you've got all those staff at the, uh, the checkout, you've got all those staff that do baggage, you've got all those staff that, that fly planes and the stewardesses and this sort of thing. But if there's no customers, what are these people going to be doing every day? I mean, are they going to be flying the planes with no passengers? Are they going to be checking in bags when there's no bags? What are these people supposed to do in jobs where there's no consumer demand? What about cruise ships? I mean, no one's going to be going on a cruise ship. So what are the cruise ship people going to do? Keep all their staff, you know, cleaning rooms and serving food and drink with no passengers? It doesn't make any sense. Why can the free market not restart the economy? Why don't we get the government out the way? Why don't we ban lockdowns indefinitely for the future of time? Why don't we get Rishi in a prison cell and then let the free market decide where resources need to be allocated so we can grow our economy uh, and we can cut, it, cut out debt? Why don't we have a rule, a law that says let's ban generational theft uh, and imprison anyone that wants to advocate for it or, um, you know, allow it to happen. Why don't we have a government that can only spend what it takes in in taxes? Then we might have economic growth. Then we might not have runaway debt and inflation. Um, and also getting back to sound money, which I've talked about, getting on a gold standard. That would allow our country to grow and prosper. There'd be abundant jobs. People would have high wages, high salaries. And, uh, you know, we wouldn't have all this government dependence, all this government welfare, and uh, be getting poorer and poorer and poorer, losing our civil liberties, and having clowns like Rishi smiling at us and telling us what a great job he's doing and how kind and compassionate the government are. These people are a disgrace. We need to get rid of them, and uh, we need to get back to a proper country again. So I hope you like this video. Please subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.